Welcome back to the On The Ball podcast, another episode of the greatest podcast going around. Took a bit of a week off last week as I have been indulging in the Olympics as most of Australia have and hopefully the world, but yeah, it's been an awesome two weeks and I have now returned. We'll be doing NRL and AFL content, but before we get back into the regular stuff, I thought I'll do an Olympics episode. I've been watching two weeks of Olympics, so I thought it would be a little bit silly not to address it on a sports podcast um there there wasn't really a perfect format for it so it's going to be a bit of a random one what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the sports um at the start so I'm actually I've actually ranked all 33 sports so I'm just going to have a little bit of a conversation about each sport maybe just suggest which one should be kicked out come Paris then I've talked about my top moments slash storylines from the games talked about the objective top events obviously um there were some events that took place that were incredible but maybe didn't interest me that much but need to be mentioned and then I've also rounding out with things to watch between now and Paris or at Paris Um, so it's only three years away which I'm already excited for but yeah I thought I would do a little bit of an episode something different I hope you enjoy it but what I'm going to do going to work my way from one to 33 to be honest it sounds like it's going to take a long time but from about the top 10 down it's probably just going to be are reeling off names because I probably don't know too much about the sport if I've got them down that low. So my number one, I've actually done them as what they're classified as Olympic sports. So this one's sort of broken up into three or four, but um, it's the aquatics or aquatics as the British say. But um, yeah, pretty much in there for the swimming. Obviously, bias being an Australian, uh, we did very, very well in the pool this year. Incredibly, in fact, uh, we won nine golds, which was our new record in the swimming. Uh, sad we didn't get the elusive 18th gold medal, which was a bit of a running joke in our house in the last three or four days. But uh, yeah, incredible Olympics, and that really was spearheaded by the Dolphins, as they call them, the Australian swimming squad. And they absolutely killed it, in particular the women. Uh, They smashed it. And, yeah, the swimming for me is probably just the most enjoyable sport. The two sort of anchor sports, you could say, in terms of the schedule are the swimming are in the first week and the athletics are in the second week. And they're sort of the prime time events uh, when we look at American TV. And, yeah, they're the two main sports. And for me, swimming is more interesting. Maybe it's because Australia is better at it, which is probably definitely likely, but... I don't know, something about athletics, which we'll get to in a little bit, there there seems to be a lot of, you know, stuffing around. Like, I know it's 100 metres and it's the theatre of it, but, you know, you sit around for 10 minutes, run for 10 seconds, sit around for 10, where the swimming, there seems to always be stuff happening. And, uh, yeah, I just find it very, very interesting. I feel like there's more back and forth in swimming uh, where running, uh, like, except obviously, you know, marathons and 10Ks and stuff, but running in the short distance, especially generally, if you head, you, you win. So, yeah, for me, the swimming's good. And it, if we're talking about aquatics, also throw in the diving, which I actually really enjoyed this year. I didn't watch too much of it, to be completely honest, because Australia's not in it very often, but I watched the men's 10 meter semis and final, and I, yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed that. And, Got into the gymnastics a bit more this year, which was my second sport, and the diving sort of overlaps with that, you'd have to say, especially in terms of like the scoring and stuff. Uh, but yeah, gymnastics was my second sport. This was one I did not really see coming. I was obviously very interested with what happened with Simone Biles, whether she could cement her legacy as uh, the goat of gymnastics, but that didn't quite unfold as it would, the script would have probably liked to have, but uh, yeah, big, big things happen in gymnastics, obviously. Simone Biles took a big stand uh, with mental health. Uh, she couldn't compete. I think she had the twisties or something, but said, like, mental health was a big factor. And then we saw the birth of a few new um, future heroes. Not saying that Biles still isn't a hero. She definitely is. But, uh, yeah, the gymnastics I really loved. I didn't watch too much of the men's. Watched a couple events here or there, but mainly the women's. And uh, that's definitely one sport. Me and my brothers have been chatting about trying to really stay in touch with these sports across the next few years before the next Olympics because every Olympics you sort of seem to be refreshing yourself on the sport before while you're watching it. But I'd like to go into the Olympics having known what's happened in the last few years. But gymnastics is definitely one that me and Campbell, my younger brother, will be keeping an eye on. Sinisa Lee is a bit of a hero in my house already. We all love her. Uh, so that was my number two. Uh, my number three cycling. 
Uh, if we split it up, none of them are probably making it this high, but as a collective, I think it's a pretty powerful sport. Uh, the track cycling maybe didn't intrigue me this year as it often does. I feel like it was shorter this year. It was only like on for three or four days, it felt like, but maybe due to the Australia's decline in um, ability in cycling, we're not as good anymore. Maybe that's why I'm not as interested, but still love the road cycling. Really enjoyed the BMX, actually, both not so much, a little bit the racing. I've the stacks put me off a little bit, the, the crashes, the injuries, it's a bit hectic. But the freestyle, that was really, really, that was awesome to watch. That's, that was a new sport to the games this year. Um, and, yeah, I didn't watch the mountain biking, but heard from all reports that that was really good as well. So, for me, cycling, very broad sport, and I think it's pretty powerful in my rankings. Number four, I've got skateboarding. This is probably the sport that took the world by storm, you'd have to say, ever um. Well, whenever I went onto Twitter, everyone was talking about the, the skateboarding. My mates were talking about it. Um, what what helped it get into the news was probably how young the people were. There was 14, 13, 12-year-olds winning, uh, which was just incredible. But, yeah, it was just a really – it's just a cool sport. That's basically the best way to say it. Like, it's not – they're obviously very, very good, but it's not a sport where you go, like, geez, they're, they're crazy. We're like gymnastics. I sort of have that feeling. But uh, just the culture they have, they're all – so, so laid back it seems and they just love each other well not love each other but you know they they love all love the sport and in with having that thing in common sort of brings them all together they're really it almost seems like they're not competitive at times which i'm sure that i'm sure they are but that was something that i noticed this olympics a lot a lot of the smaller sports they just seem to have great cultures which i think is really really cool and yeah skateboarding was really really fun to watch both the park and the street Number five, I have surfing. I've obviously watched a lot of surfing outside of the Olympics, being a Australian and having parents who grew up around beaches. But, uh, yeah, I thought it was a good addition to the games. Obviously, the waves weren't great at a lot of points. But, yeah, I probably won't talk about too much of the surfing because, yeah, I didn't learn too much about it from the Olympics. It's uh, not sure. It will be interesting to see if surfing stays in and how the gold medal ranks up against, you know, winning the World Tour and stuff because, in my opinion, for a sport to smash it at the Olympics, the gold medal has to be the pinnacle, which is why I've got a few bigger sports down pretty low. But yeah, I just think the surfing is a good addition and I really enjoyed watching it as usual. Uh, number six, I have the athletics. Normally this would be higher, but I have to say, I think I was maybe a little bit underwhelmed from the athletics. I mentioned it before in the when I was talking about the swimming, but I don't know, maybe it's due to Australia's lack of success and uh athletics relative to uh swimming but yeah i just didn't get into it as much i think the second week as well university started so i had to take a bit of a step back but yeah definitely prefer swimming to athletics something about it as i mentioned just the format seems to be um more viewer friendly i'd have to say at on, on tv for swimming than it is athletics but yeah really really love athletics i like how it shines the light on a lot of smaller nations and you know, maybe not so well off countries where the swimming sort of being t- tends to be dominated by the first world country. So that's the good thing about athletics that I like. Uh, number seven, this is a rogue one, but the weightlifting. Didn't watch too much of it. Obviously, there's so many weight divisions and stuff like that, but watched the first couple on the first few days and I actually really enjoyed it. It's a sport that I think you benefit a lot. I noticed this in quite a few of the sports. It's, it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you watch it from the start of the session, as in like at the start of the final, you can really, really get into it and get behind certain weightlifters. You maybe work out a couple you don't like, a couple you like, and then all of a sudden you're really invested. And that's what happened. I think it was the 49 kilo women's. My whole family got right into it one weekend. And that was probably one of my favorite memories coming out of this Olympics. And yeah, so weightlifting, hopefully going to watch more of that moving forward. Obviously, didn't watch all the divisions because after a while, it does sort of become the same thing over and over again. But, yeah, no, I really, really enjoyed it. Number eight, I have the football, also known as the soccer here in Australia. Uh, this one's always a hard one. The women have the full strength team, so I think the women would be a lot higher. The whole country got behind the Matildas, it felt like. Um I have to say, I'm not sure how it goes with viewership and stuff. I obviously watch the World Cup with more intent in terms of the Women's World Cup, but uh, it seems as though in Australia we actually get around the Olympics more than the World Cup for the women's soccer. So that's an interesting point. But the only thing holding the back, the men, I think men's soccer's got to go. Like I know they can't really keep women's soccer and kick out men's soccer, but I was talking to my mate about this, and I think the reason why it's not a big thing in men's soccer is, A, it's not senior, like it's under 23s, but... 
the men's soccer already has the Copper America, the Euros below the World Cup, where in the women, they don't really have those tournaments. They have them, but they're sort of used as qualification for the World Cup. So the Olympics is like the secondary tournament where in uh, men's soccer, winning the Olympics is like probably fifth or sixth rung for a lot of players. So yeah, I, I have to think, I have to say men's soccer's probably got to go. I don't rate having an under 23 system in the olympics for me if it's like if they clearly care about it that little it shouldn't be at the olympics uh yeah it's uh, it's a tough call but for me it shouldn't be there i don't think it will get removed anytime soon because everyone likes soccer but yeah i thought the women's soccer was a big highlight of the tournament really enjoyed a lot of that especially the matildas but yeah the men's soccer just can't get around it uh number nine i have the archery i actually really enjoyed the archery Uh, i watched some of the qualification and it was absolutely rubbish. I was like, this is one of the worst sports, but uh, cause there's like 40 archers all going at once and you like, can't really see what's going on, but they, when they get into the bracket, so they have, you know, they rank them in 64th and then one play 64 and so on. And it's a one V one duel. I actually start, I kind of liked it then it's quick. The game only lasts about five minutes. You just snap onto the next person. And I was starting to get around it on a, in a couple days there. So that's my number nine. Number 10, I've got baseball and softball. I didn't watch any of the baseball, but I have to say it doesn't seem that interesting. It's actually out for the next Olympics, which was must be a bit weird for these players, knowing that they can't come back to the next Olympics. But I really enjoyed the softball. It started before the tournament, so I was before the competition, so I was all over that. And, yeah, I really enjoyed the softball. Baseball, it's pretty B tier. Like I was looking at the American team, there was no MLB players and stuff like that. I think the MLB season is currently going, so... Yeah, once again, as I mentioned, if it's not viewed in high regard by the players, I don't think the sport should be there. So I do understand why it's getting removed. Uh, feel bad for softball, though, because it seems like the pinnacle there. Number 11, I have the hockey. Australia is obviously a big powerhouse in the hockey, but I don't find it the most interesting sport to watch. It's a very long sport. Um, some of the good things about the sports like weightlifting and archery, uh, it's really quick if you're someone who doesn't know much about the sport. So I don't know much about hockey. So it's a long sport to sit through when you don't know much about it. I appreciate the skill. Um, it's pretty similar to like soccer, similar tactics and stuff. I uh, just don't enjoy it as much. Number 12, got rugby sevens. Really good sport. Uh, I think it's a good addition to the games. Just don't watch it that much because I watch rugby league myself. And so I'm not going to choose to watch rugby sevens over some sports that I never get to watch. Number 13, I've got equestrian. Now, equestrian's a big difference. If we're talking about dressage, we're probably talking about the worst sport at the Olympics. If we're talking about eventing or jumping, I actually don't mind. I watched the eventing uh, Australia won a bronze on the team and a silver in the individual, and I actually really enjoyed that. So, that yeah, the eventing, love it, dressage, get stuff. That is so boring. Uh, canoeing, number 14. Interesting one here. There's two very, very different sides to canoeing. There's the slalom, which Jess Fox, obviously, is famous for in Australia. I, I do enjoy that. After a while, it becomes a bit of the same thing, like 30 people doing the same course. But when it comes down to the final people for the medals, it's pretty hectic and whether they get through the gates cleanly and stuff like that. The canoe sprint, don't enjoy that as much. Very similar to rowing at the end of the day. But um, yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, number 15, shooting. Watched the final of the w- one of the women's shooting. It's not bad. It's not great. I think it would be a better sport to watch in person because you could sort of see like the clay target and then them shooting it. But on TV, it's not the best, but yeah, it's all right. Not bad. Golf in 16. I actually watched a lot of the golf, to be honest, especially the women's really got into the third and fourth day for them. Uh, the only thing about this one, I don't think it's held in high regard by the players. I think the players would much rather win a major. Same as tennis. I think the players would much rather win a major. Uh, so that's one thing about it that I don't rate. I saw a lot of people saying it shouldn't be there, but uh, yeah, I didn't mind watching it, to be honest, so I, I don't mind if it's there. Number 17, rowing, as I mentioned, similar to the canoe sprint. It's not a bad sport. Like You don't really get into it. Uh, it's very slow it's in the races. Take you know seven, eight minutes, but it's not a bad background noise sport. Number 18, basketball. Now, this is nothing on basketball. I'm just not a huge basketball fan myself. The three-on-three basketball, everyone's talking about that being absolutely trash. Uh, and then the normal basketball itself, it's not bad. I actually don't mind it, but, yeah, I just don't like the basketball that much as a sport. 
Number 19, badminton. I actually don't mind badminton. I've got it over the likes of table tennis and tennis. However, yeah, look, we're down at number 19. I'm not going to lie. I don't watch much of these sports. Number 20, sport climbing. I was very excited to watch this one. It maybe let me down a little bit. I thought the speed round was pretty boring because they only go for like six seconds and similar to the athletics, it's six seconds of action and then, you know, two minutes of sitting around doing nothing. I found the bouldering a bit more interesting, it like sort of puzzles and stuff like that. I think it would be more interesting to watch there because you can sort of watch everyone go, but on TV it was a little bit confusing at times, but I didn't mind it. 21, I've got table tennis. I think table tennis has good potential as a sport, but the problem is the players are too good. It's actually hard to watch. Like I was watching some of the medal matches and uh, even if there's like an 8, 10 shot rally, the rally genuinely lasts about five seconds. So it's like, yeah, it's just really hard to track. I don't mind it though. It's not bad. I appreciate the skill. Number 22, tennis. The issue with tennis is it's just not the pinnacle of the sport. Um, a lot of the big players come out, but yeah, they just don't see it very heavily. I'm not saying they're money dependent, but it's pretty hard to motivate yourself, I'd imagine, when you're playing in other tournaments where you can win up to like $4 million and you're playing in the Olympics where, uh, yeah, obviously gold medals, everyone's dream going up. But, uh, yeah, it's not not the pinnacle of the sport and I wouldn't be watching the tennis at the Olympics anytime soon. Number 23, triathlon. I don't mind it. doesn't have much impact on the Olympics, so it's only like two days. They've brought in the triathlon relay, which I wouldn't mind watching. Didn't watch that, though. Uh, Australia a bit bad at triathlon these days, so haven't didn't watch much volleyball. Uh, I don't mind it. Australia don't have a volleyball team, so I don't watch much of it. It has the potential to be a good sport when it's played well, uh, but yeah, I didn't watch any of it to be honest. Number twenty five sailing. We won a few gold medals in sailing, but I don't think it's the biggest spectator sport. I've been getting not getting into, but I've watched a few of the sail GP, which is um i'm not sure if it's the same people who run it but sort of an f1 motor gp style but sailing and i actually don't mind that but yeah the sailing at the olympics like the little dinghies and stuff not as interesting and not as much as a spectator sport as the sail gp number 26 the boxing i just find the boxing hard to watch it's obviously in the past been amateurs they changed the rules this year to i think you can have up to 10 fights Sure, that improved the quality a little bit, but still, it's just a bit weird when you know there's better people of the sport out there. Uh, 27, modern pentathlon. Question's got to be asked, like, what is that sport? Like, it's just, with the greatest respect, it's stupid. I know it's tradition and stuff like that, but are they the greatest athletes going around? Probably not. Like, they're, they're obviously better athletes than me, don't get me wrong, but it's just not great. Number 28, fencing. Didn't watch a single fencing match. Uh, it just doesn't tickle my fancy that much. It's very skillful. I've done it before. It's not a bad sport to play, but, yeah, it's not great. Number 29, handball. Uh, handball's sort of one of those sports where everyone sort of thinks, oh, yeah, handball's fun, like it's cool. Played in P, not bad in, in school, uh, but I've watched it. It's just it's similar to basketball. My issue with these sports is that they're too high scoring. When they score a goal, you can't celebrate because it's like there's going to be 25 more. Uh, the game I was watching, like every two seconds, there was a goal. So I just don't appreciate it personally. And then my final four are martial arts. So if you're a martial arts fan, uh, don't get offended. But I have to say, going from I'm not a big UFC fan, but watching UFC and then coming back to these sports, it's sort of like, what's the point? Um, Taekwondo. It was just weird. Like, it was someone just kicking with the front leg like this over and over again, and it's sort of like, why aren't you kicking with the other leg? Uh, and wrestling, didn't watch much of the wrestling. Just does not a spectator sport, in my opinion. Judo, same thing. And karate, one of the weirdest sports I've ever seen, was the one where they're not one-on-one, -on -one, where they're just or do, like they're performing for the judges. Didn't know that was a sport, but, yeah, that's my lowest-ranked sport. And I think it's not being in – I don't think it's being held in Paris, so – uh, I'm obviously not the only one with that, that opinion. I know it originated from Japan, so it made sense for them to have it in its debut. But, yeah, I don't think that will be coming back to the Olympics anytime soon. And, yeah, I'm just not a big martial arts fan. I'm sure there's fans out there. But now we've done my top 33 in the sports. We'll be going through some of my top moments. So this is just going to be a broad conversation. I'm going to talk about my moments that touch me the most. Then the top of events that maybe didn't touch me as much as the average Joe, but were pretty big. And then things I'm excited to look forward to in the next three years and at Paris. So 
My number one was Titmus versus Ledecky. Now, this was very hyped up in the Australian media. Uh, I'm not a big fan, but like I was very impressed with Ledecky at previous at the 2016 games. Heard about Titmus in the 2019 World Champs and sort of knew this was coming, and I was very excited for it up against each other in the 200, 400, and 800. Uh, they Titmus got the job done in the 400, which was the big event. Ledecky was pretty much always going to win the 800. Titmus was always going to win the 200. And it sort of came down to that one in the middle, which was actually the one they started with. But, yeah, it was a very, very good race. Titmus ran her down. And, yeah, I think that was one of the first gold medals that we won at the Olympics as a country in Australia. And, yeah, I think everyone was getting around it at home. And instantly she, there was a celebrity born in Titmus. And I think, I, like, her profile for Paris is going to be absolutely ridiculous because she's going to be in the prime of her career and everyone's going to be loving her. So really excited to watch that grow as well um, through the world championships and stuff. Not sure how long Ledecky has left in her career, but she's definitely not old by any stretch. So, yeah, going to be interested to see how they go against each other in the Worlds, uh, whether they compete in the Swimming League uh, and other the Pan Pacifics, and then hopefully they're both there in Paris, and that'll be a good one to watch. Uh, another thing that really, really caught my eye was Emma McKeon. Uh, she won seven medals and broke the record for the most medals. At the Olympics as an Australian, she broke Ian Thorpe and Liesl Jones's record of nine medals. Uh, I think Thorpe still has one more gold than her, but uh, yeah, it's pretty incredible that Emma McKeon is the most successful Olympian of all time from Australia. So yeah, that was one. That I had my eye on pretty much the whole games, uh, probably annoyingly to my mates. Every time she won a medal, I basically texted, she's one more closer, but I thought that was a really, really cool record. Uh, for me, this was more of a storyline, but I, I mentioned this to my mum about halfway through the games. And one thing I love about the Olympics that maybe I've not appreciated before this, but I love the spotlight that gets put on women's sport in Australia. And 10 out of our 17 golds were won by women or teams of women, and I just find in every other situation, there's some sports where everyone gets around with the women in it, but I find as though in other situations, like I'm trying not to be sexist here, but my overall point is the opposite. Uh, But like I feel like when some people watch AFLW and stuff like that, they're sort of going out of their way to watch a women's sport where they would happily just watch AFL and not AFLW, where I feel like in the Olympics people are genuinely watching women's sport for entertainment and they're really really loving it everyone was getting around the Matildas no one cared that it wasn't the Socceroos they were getting around the Matildas more than the Socceroos people were celebrating the women's swimming more than the men's swimming the women's athletes more than the men's athletes and yeah I just feel like it's one of the true places in sport where there's true equality in Australia um yeah I just think that's a great thing that came out of this Olympics for me that I noticed is that every women's achievement is celebrated as much, if not more, than the men's achievements, which is rare to see in the sporting world. Uh, another great moment was Andre de Grasse finally winning an international gold medal. I think he'd won eight or nine international medals of other colours other than gold, but in the 200 metres he didn't win the 100 and then he finally got his medal in the 200, which I think, well, I know in my circles everyone was absolutely stoked. I came onto the scene in 2016 uh, with that famous moment with Bolt where they both looked at each other going over the line and I think he sort of became a crowd favourite then. And, yeah, he was one of the biggest names in the field in both the 100 and 200, and for him to win was really cool. Uh, he was on the family cam after talking to his family and he just seemed like a really good bloke. So, yeah, stoked for him to win and interested to see how his career continues to develop over the next three years. Uh, another great moment was the pole vault. Me and my mum watched this one, Armand Duplantis of Sweden. Uh, he absolutely tore it up and it was just such a cool moment. He won the gold medal and then uh, he, cause he hadn't lost yet. He still had three more jumps. So he pumped it up to the world record. Didn't care about getting a PB. Didn't care about an Olympic record. Just went straight for that world record. And he came within inches of doing it. And there was photos of him when he won gold, he was definitely above the world record height and he's only 21, I believe. So he'll definitely get in, be getting that world record soon, but yeah, it was one of the weird sports where, like, he was just so much better than everyone else. It was just incredible. Uh, so, yeah, well done to him. 
Uh, another great thing in Australian sport, maybe other people didn't notice this, but in the men's decathlon, we won bronze, Ashley Maloney, but one of the great sites was Cedric Dubler in the final lap of, I think it's the 1500 meters that they run. Uh, Maloney needed to, you know, not finish far enough behind fourth and fifth to catch him and Dubler ran right next to him the whole way and was yelling in his ear and then he sort of Maloney burnt him and um, went on towards the finish and Dubler crossed the line and last I think in that event uh, but he was just so happy that his teammate had won bronze he was screaming as he ran across the line it was a great photo and that was just an awesome moment one of the earlier moments uh, this <laughs> Look, I've probably never been so invested in an individual Olympian than Jess Fox this year. Um, I've heard a lot about Jess Fox. Didn't watch her in 2016, I don't believe. Didn't know much about canoeing, but I've read a bit about her and I didn't know she was held in such high regard in canoeing circles. She seems like such a nice person. I was barracking hard for her in the first one and then she sort of, I'll be honest, I'll blatantly say it, she choked um, when she got that those two fouls and she came third despite qualifying miles ahead of everyone and it looked like her olympic dream might be over which was pretty shattering as she looked like a penciled in gold and then she backed up in the other discipline which i believe was the kayaking was second could be wrong though and she won gold uh people were expecting it less in this discipline and she did it easy and it was just a great moment i cried i can't even lie uh it was awesome her mum was there her dad was commentating her sister was there and she's actually born in France, so I'm excited to see if she goes to the Paris Olympics and if she does well. Uh, yeah, she's just a legend. Seems so cool. And that was another sport with a great culture. The canoeing girls seem to really, really get around each other, which is cool. But uh, as I mentioned before in the women's sport um, spiel that I went on, I thought the Matildas was one of the highlights of the Olympics. I think most people in Australia watched all their games. I think one of their games rated like three and a half million, which is just incredible. Uh, incredible for women's sport, incredible for Australian sport, incredible for Australian soccer slash football. Uh, it was a shame they didn't go past where they went, but uh, losing in a bronze medal match 4-3 to the United States is nothing to scoff at. And, yeah, look, it would have been great for them to beat Sweden in the semis and go into a gold medal match. That would have been one of the biggest moments. That would have been the biggest Australian moment at the Games, 100%, if they went into that gold medal match. Uh, but it, it wasn't to be, but, yeah, awesome awesome achievement from the Matildas to come forth at the Olympic Games and definitely they found a whole new fan base I think. Uh, something that I really got around in the last couple of days was the women's golf. Mentioned it before yeah it was just a really entertaining duel. Didn't know much about anyone going into it. Knew of the Australian Minji Lee, knew the New Zealander Lydia Ko and that was about the extent of my knowledge but now I know about 20 golfers and I'm probably going to watch the Women's British Open this weekend. Uh, so really looking forward to that. That was a great uh, event, in my opinion. The drama of they were the final groups were on hole 18 and 17 on the final day, and there was lining strikes, and they had to go off. It was just you couldn't script it. Uh, the whole women's gymnastics, as I mentioned before, that was something that I wasn't expecting to get behind, and it probably ended up being my favourite sport. Uh, so that's definitely something I'm going to be tracking before until Paris. Excited to see the growth because they're also young, so it's cool to see where they go in their careers. And then probably one of the biggest successes coming out of this was the addition of some of the X Games sports, you would say. Uh, the BMX freestyle, the surfing, the skateboarding. Uh, everyone absolutely loved. I don't know how to, they're not like dangerous sports. I don't know how what that group of sports would be classified as, but everyone absolutely loved all of those sports. I did. I know myself, I loved it. Uh, it was great to see some of those sports broadcasted to a wider audience. And yeah, that's definitely one that, will stay in i know france have a big culture in all of those sports so it's going to be huge in paris i reckon and i'm really looking forward to that some of the other big events from the games was tom got daly winning gold in the synchro 10 meter platform and diving huge fan of tom daly seen a lot of his work on youtube and he just seems like a really nice guy so for him to finally get his gold medal was awesome sadly he didn't get it done in individual but came bronze uh came third which was awesome won bronze Caleb Dressel dominated in the pool. Everyone was sort of expecting it going into it. Uh, but And I, I, I don't like these American alpha dudes, but he won two world records, beat four Olympic records, won five gold medals. You've got to congratulate him on that. Uh, the dominance of the youngsters was something else I really, really noticed. Uh, the skateboarding highlighted it uh, with the women. I think the 13-year-old came third, a 12-year-old won, something like that. It was crazy. 
the swimming, there was 14-year-old Summer McIntosh was killing it in the long distance. I think she got a bronze medal. 16-year-old David Popovici in the in the sprinting freestyle races. He was in all the finals. Uh, the gymnastics people are so young. So, uh, yeah, it's just really cool. I'm excited now that I'm a bit older to track these people's career. It's going to be cool to see who turns out to be goats of their sport, guns of their sport, and who sort of turns out to just be you know, one-time Olympians, but I'm excited to see that. Another huge event was the 400-meter hurdles where the top two broke the record and the winner broke it by 0.75 of a second in 400-meter hurdles. So uh, he was only like two seconds off the 400-meter record and he had 10 hurdles to navigate, which I thought was incredible. Carsten Warholm of the uh, of Norway and uh, he'll be, I'm sure, battling out with, I think it's Rye Benjamin of the United States between now and Paris, and that's going to be a great rivalry. Both of them are still pretty young. Uh, another huge event that happened on the last day, Elliot Kipchoge won the marathon, second person to double up in the marathon, and the, uh, third time, sorry, it's happened, uh, probably uh, secured himself to be the GOAT of long-distance running. Obviously, he's had a famed career in the 5,000 uh, and other distances and then into marathons. Going to be really interested to see where he goes from here. He is 36, uh, which isn't that old for a marathon runner, but... Uh, at this stage, he's won everything there is to win, so I'll be interested to see if he keeps going. If so, it will be very, very cool if he can be. I, th- I think no one's won three times in a row, so that's definitely going to be one to watch in Paris if he lines up in the marathon. Elaine Tents, thompson Hera doing the back-to-back double in the 100-200 athletics women's sprints. Uh, I was going for Fraser Price, I can't lie, but, yeah, you can't knock that feat. Incredible from thompson Hera, And then finally, Sifan Hassan of the Netherlands, winning the 10K, 5K, and bronze in the 1500. That was an incredible achievement. Talks of whether she could do the triple, but getting two golds and a bronze out of those three events was pretty incredible. Now, things to watch between now and Paris. Really, really looking forward to, um, as I mentioned earlier, trying to keep a track of the sports I really, really enjoyed watching, Trying to aiming to watch a lot more world championships in the next three years. I think that's um, something I look forward to because, it's hard to focus on all the sports when you're in the Olympics, but at the world champs, they're, um, you know, sort of got their own spotlight, so that'd be cool to watch. But things I'm going to watch for is will a dominant force rise in the 100 metres men's uh, on the, the athletics track? Has to be said, it was one of the least known 100 metre fields of all time. Uh, I think there was only two household names, you would have to say, everyone knows to grass, and I think Johan Blake made the final. He might not have even made the final, but Apart from those two, the rest of the field was pretty mythical to non-athletic fans such as myself. Uh, So it's going to be interesting to see between now and then if a big dog really arises and we come to Paris with a uh, a full-blown favourite going into it, unlike there was in Tokyo. Uh, Obviously, Marcel Jacobs won. Can't see him dominating for the next three years, but don't want to write him off. Uh, Ledecky versus Titmus, as I mentioned, Warholm versus Benjamin in the 400 hurdles. Will Kipchoge go around again, as I mentioned? Athing Mu versus Keely Hodgkinson in the 800 meter for women. Both 19 years old and they won gold and silver on the track. So that's going to be a huge rivalry to watch over the next two Olympic cycles. Uh, PV Sindhu, the Indian badminton player, she was very close to becoming the first Indian female solo gold medalist. Might just be gold medalist in general uh not sure if a hockey team's won it before but i have a few friends who are family friends with her and i followed her progress through the tournament it was sad that she got eliminated but she's still 26 got a chance to go again in paris and between now and then it'll be interesting to see how she goes the u.s women's men's uh the u.s women's men's national team that does not make sense the u.s women's national team in soccer it's going to be interesting to see how they go they've not hit their first stumble, but I feel as though a lot a lot of countries have narrowed the gap on them. Uh, you know, only four or five years ago, they were streets ahead of a lot of the countries. But it seems as though, especially in Europe, the funding in women's soccer and football has gone up a lot. Uh, the clubs are now, we've seen the rise of the Women's Premier League or the Women's Super League, whatever they call it in England. Uh, a lot of the big European clubs are now getting into the women's side of the game. And with that, you would expect the women, uh, the sport, countries of Europe to start rising like they, and become dominant powerhouses like they are in the men's game. We've seen that with Sweden, England starting to get a, become a really, really good team. 
Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether the US can bounce back from arguably their shock bronze medal performance. You would have expected them to win silver or gold at least, but that's something I'm going to be interested to track. Nelly Corder in the golf, she's only 23. She won the gold medal pretty comfortably, was ahead pretty much the whole way, and she looks like she could really stake a claim as becoming the goat of golf. I know it's only she's only 23, so it's a bold claim to go that early, but from a famous sporting family, the Corders, and yeah, this could be the beginning of something really, really special for Nelly Corder. Uh, in the same sport, Ashati Ashok uh, of India, I think she won the silver medal. So she was arguably closer than PV Sindhu, and she's not much, very well talked about. Uh, she's like ranked 205 or something ridiculous. So she could be the next big superstar of Indian sport. Obviously, they have some great teams. They've got a great hockey team, a great cricket team, but they don't have many huge uh, individual sporting athletes, and she could be uh, the next big thing there. Uh, Suni Lee is going to be interesting to track the female all-round gymnast champion of Tokyo. Uh, she goes off to college next year, I believe, so I'm not sure what happens there. I, the gymnastics NCA, NCAA rules are pretty confusing, but going to be interested to track her progress. And finally, will Novak Djokovic go to Paris? He has yet to complete his dream of winning a gold medal. Sadly, lost to Sasha Zverev in the semis. And, yeah, will he... So, not sadly, he's, you know, he's won enough. He's got a great life. He's a very, very rich man, but... Uh, he's probably he will be the go to tennis by the time he retires. But will he stick around till he's thirty seven to win another gold medal? Uh, well, his first gold medal in Paris. We'll wait and see. That will be a very very interesting storyline that maybe people might think of, might not think of. So that's probably it for me. It's been a bit of an Olympics rant. I'm not going to ignore that, and I'm sure it's not been very interesting for a lot of you because a lot of these experiences I had personally. Hopefully, I told some nice interesting stories. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'm not sure the future of this podcast, definitely going to be doing AFL and NRL for the rest of the year. If we do go into the future, though, expect a few more random episodes on sports uh, that I've been talking about here, because there are definitely a few that I'm going to be trying to keep an eye on. I'm going to be making a sporting calendar for myself so I know when the big events are on and I can stay tuned and hopefully watch some of them because yeah, I really, really enjoy my two weeks. All my mates would know I've it's been an unhealthy addiction the last two weeks. I've pretty much watched every sport there is to watch. And uh, yeah, thanks to Tokyo for hosting a great Olympics. And thanks for having a great time zone with Australia. Looking forward to Paris already and Beijing winter next year. Uh, And yeah, thanks for tuning in. Cheers. Bye.